dual and trusted endpoint leveraging Active Directory directory services. All right. So there's great doc on Duo. You need Duo Beyond licensing in order for you to use trusted endpoints. You need to have enterprise and domain admin access. You need a domain joined asset, Windows 2012 R2 or 2016. That'll be for the dual certificate proxy. You also have to go into um, the dual admin panel and enable the Active Directory domain services. So let's first do that. Let's get that piece out of the way. And so we're on Duo, the Trusted Endpoints Configuration, Configure Management Tools Integration, and you can see this Active Directory Domain Services. So we add this integration, and we download the MSI. That'll be installed on that member server. And then there's a couple of registry key entries that we can, we're going to import too, just to make life easier around the certificate um, uh, trustworthiness for browsers as an example. Okay, so minimum requirements, they're called out here specifically. Big thing here is that uh, you also need .NET Framework 462. I know it says 452, but I did 452 and I tried the install and it didn't work, it requested 462. You need Windows uh, Universal Runtime uh, as well and you can see here walk through the installation we put in the api key or the secret key long-lived and short-lived certificates depending on use case so trusted endpoints for example would be long-lived and then duo admins obviously short-lived um, trusted we're going to make it trusted i know i'm going quick here but we're going to walk through each of it and then we'll get into the group policy portion of it all right, so we've got our member server. It's uh, obviously um, part of the domain. And we're just going to do the installation of the dual certificate proxy. We'll launch their certificate wizard. And this is where we're going to put in that API key. Long lived and short lived. And I've already grabbed my users previously. So you just come in, Duo Trusted Endpoints in this case, and Duo Admin. We're doing Trusted, or Trust the Duo Root. And that's it. Now we still got some work to do. We've got to go in now into Group Policy, and we want to set up Auto Enrollment. We also want to make sure that the the renew expired certificate, update pending certificate, and remove revoked certificates also takes place. So there'll be a couple check marks. Then we got a couple registry entries that we got to import, right? So um, those are those two XML files that we downloaded that we're going to import. And the first one. is the H key current user that um, will go in and will follow that path user configuration preferences Windows settings registry and all we do is right click that window and we uh, copy that file into it okay and these allow Internet Explorer and Edge to automatically select dual device certificate when requested by the browser prompt the next one's going to be H key local machine. And again, we'll go back up to that registry uh, location and we'll import that in. And this registry value allows Explore Edge and Chrome to automatically select Duo. Okay, so um, we also go in and we'll modify some permissions, but let's get this started first. So we're in Group Policy Management Console. We'll go into group policy objects and we're going to create a new group policy object. And we'll call this Duo Certificate Policy. 
You can name it whatever you want, whatever's meaningful to you. And then we'll hit OK, and then we're going to go in and do some uh, modification of that policy. And then ultimately, we're going to assign that to the domain. So let's go in and edit this. All right, so first thing we're going to do is user configuration, policies, window setting, security settings, public key policies. And in here, we're going to cl click that auto enrollment. We're going to enable it. And this is where we're going to select those two options here. So re renew expired certificates, update pending certificates, and remove revoked. We're going to check that. And we're also going to check the update certificate that used certificate templates. And we'll hit apply or OK. Both uh, do the same thing. And then we're going to go down to, again, in user configuration, we're going to use preferences, window setting, and then registry. And this is where we're going to copy that file into. Okay, so we'll do um, each key current user first, and then we'll do local machine. Pretty easy, right click, copy. And paste. And then we go back to registry. We can copy the file and we can import this one as well. Perfect. All right, so now we have those two keys in. Um, what we can do is close this out here now. And what we can do is go to the certificate, dual certificate policy. We'll go to delegation. We'll go to advanced. And here we're going to add. And we're going to add domain computers. And we're going to make sure that it has read, which it does by default. So there's our domain computers group. We've got read and let's go down and select apply group policy. And again, apply or okay. And for scope, we're going to remove authenticated users. And we're going to add those duo user groups that we created. I didn't show that, but uh, you can add them. So duo admins, this will be for short time certificates or short lived certificates and duo trusted endpoints, which is going to be the long longer lived certificates. Now we go up to the domain itself. We can link an existing GPO and we'll grab Duo Certificate Policy. Perfect. Close out uh, Group Policy Management Console. I'm just going to log into an endpoint. Here, this is the first time this user is logged in, so it's going to go through. I left this kind of up here instead of stopping and and restarting the video but anyways user is now logged in we're going to go to the command prompt and, and what we're going to do here is just validate that we actually got the group policy setting so we'll do a force here most likely because it's the first time the user logged in wouldn't have to do this but if this is an existing asset that's on the network you may want to force GP update. And then we ran GP results as well. So it's just going to give us a, a idea here. We can see 
dual certificate uh, policy and then up here when we look apply group policy objects we can see it's applied so so far it looks like everything's working right okay let's go in and check and see if we have the certificate so let's go into cert manager and go into certificates and look at that duo device authentication pretty seamless eh? okay the next thing we're going to do is check those registry entries so the first one I'm going to type out here the next one I'm going to copy and paste so so each key current user software Microsoft Windows spell it right current version internet internet settings zones and one and we can see those two entries at the top or sorry the yeah the two entries at the top 1A04 and 1406 should be zero times or X zero so perfect that's good we'll check the other one as well for HK local machines and we can see there that it was entered okay we need now since we've now have this deployed in a long enough time for that to get pushed out to your users now we activate this service right so now trusted endpoints is available for us to actually turn on within application okay so um, or assign to a policy right so here what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this is an example on the ASA but we could also I'm also going to do this with F5 as well um, and, and I'm actually going to showcase F5 showing that you know all the videos I do for the most part are really Cisco centric there's some third party integration and this will be another one where you can see another product outside of the Cisco scope work here we're going to create a, uh, a new policy we're just going to call this trusted uh, maybe endpoint or something like that uh, maybe you wouldn't call it that uh, per se but uh, I'm going to use that name here and all I'm going to focus on is the devices to add the trusted endpoint and I'm going to say require endpoint to be trusted so now that I'm trusted or now this endpoint um, is a trusted endpoint is assigned to this application what's going to happen is when a user comes in and authenticates um, if they're not on a trusted asset they're going to fail and again I go ahead and I'll do this in F5 as well not going to show you the steps are the same okay so let's log in and this is logging in from a trusted device okay and so the expectation here is it should just work we get the push we accept the push success logging in perfect exactly what's expected now if we jump to another endpoint and it's untrusted let's see what happens what does the user get we're sorry access is not allowed if you're using a personal or public device try within a company approved device so it's showing that it denied that untrusted device and you can see here that it is untrusted and they tried to connect and so they didn't get the second prompt we just put up a page to say sorry um, that device is not trusted go somewhere else pretty easy stuff